Right, it is approximately 10 o'clock on a Saturday. It is the 8th of July. We're going to do a full garden tour because I ain't done one for quite a while. Can't remember the last one, so we'll do one now, then we'll do one sort of at the end of the summer and see. So we can see the differences and see what's grown. It's been a slow start to the season, but you know, things are well behind, a good month behind, but nevertheless, we're going to see what's going on. We've uh, already covered the, the new seating area in a previous video, so if you haven't seen that, you'll go back and watch that and um, you'll see all the plants that's in there. <clears throat> right, so we've still got the selling benches along the side here, so we have to excuse that, that's just random leftover plants. So we'll start at the end of the house, as it were, where the conservatory is, and we've got a selection of just uh, random potted plants. We've got the two tree ferns in the raised planters. They're open-bottomed. They are absolutely full of roots. They need watering every day, but I still like them in the planters, just give them that extra height. They're not possibly doing as well as they would in the ground but they still flush out you know they do a couple of flushes each year and uh, we've even kept the fronds from last year just about some are sort of browning off but underplanted with uh, you know your hostas which are now flowering and some ferns as well see the, the bee there loving that so exactly the same this side raised planter, um, ferns and hostas, and, and some more pot plants at the back here. So we've got a fishtail palm, which is doing quite well. It's sort of flushed out new foliage this year. And we've got the avocado trees here, which I grew from seed three, two, three years ago. Um, just overwintered in the unheated greenhouse. Seem to be quite happy. So we're not going to go into the greenhouse now, but we have got some uh, tomato plants just outside the greenhouse there. <clears throat> so we move on to the arid section. And needless to say, we had a bit of rain about a week ago. We had a well over an inch of rain, so that was good. That helped the garden. But within that week, we've just got a, a sea of weeds again in the in this area so I am gonna sort this out eventually but nevertheless we'll carry on ignore the weeds um, yeah so we've got the selection of cacti I not don't need to go into all of them we've got a uh, Mexican lily which is getting quite big no sign of any flower spikes on that yet the uh, Brahea amata is doing quite well it has opened two fronds this year and there's a spear there for the third The little yucca strata at the back there is starting to, to go. That was planted a couple of years ago, very, very small, just like a tuft of grass. So that's that's uh, slow but sure. The poor yuccas are trying to regrow. So we've got a small head on the top and we've got about 20 around the bottom of that. The red star, that which uh, red star cord line is uh, trying to flush out again as well. We have got a hydrangea at the back there, that's always been there. I didn't plant that, that's there since I moved in, what, 16 years ago. Um, yeah, so basically everything's doing okay on, on the uh, arid side. This uh, Americana agave, the, the yellow variegated form, is getting huge as well. I think there's going to become a point where I might have to move that because that's going to probably take over the Brahea there. Right, so yeah, everything's doing well there, apart from the, obviously, the Aeoniums, which uh, totally died over winter. They, they survived the last four winters in the ground, but this winter was too much for them. No regrowth on them, no big deal. I took loads of cuttings. Once they grow on, I'll replant them next year. <coughs> So we've got the, the Lucifer, Cocosmia Lucifer, starting to uh, flower, looking quite good. 
and then we've got that other yucca jewel which we lost the top growth but again we can see there's five side growths on that so we'll let that do do this thing and recover so at the front here we've sort of got more of a, a lush tropical area in front of the yard bed um so we've got dahlias dahlias at the back here which are starting to get some buds on them we've got some small small canners more dahlias more small canners again very very slow at start this year then we've got the the tiger flowers which i dislike the foliage on these they sort of look like the palm strap leaves they're, they're quite nice they will flower um maybe in a few weeks and then we've got all the the elephant ears that we put in i don't know three or four weeks ago so they're starting to do okay you know the weather's been up and down we have a couple of hot days and we have a couple of cool days but things are growing Yeah, so I think everything's sort of uh, settled in now and bouncing back from any transplant shock. We did keep them well watered. Another load of the uh, Cacosmia there. Really vivid red, deep red flowers on them. And we've got the red banana at the back there. That's doing quite well. It's in a pot, but we keep it well watered. It's doing, doing pretty good. Doing better than the other ones we'll have a look at them later and behind that we've got some uh, bamboo that's the the gold flecky green I, I, i'm not a fan of bamboo but i've got some in a pot there and i've got some at the bottom of the garden we'll look at the big clump later um yeah so that's in a pot again and we've got the uh leukacacia thai giant um again with the weather up and down the leaves are uh, starting to get bigger as they go i mean it's now starting to open up a, another leaf there and we've got the uh, zebra grass which is not looking very stripey at the minute but that tends to stripes tend to kick in as it sort of matures we've got the uh canna tropicana black nice deep dark foliage on that and then we've got the uh, Camerops humulus which is in a pot and uh, unlike most of the ones in the ground had no problems with this one it didn't spear pull and uh, yeah just done a lot better in a pot than it, it did it in the ones in the ground but that's I'd put that down to you know the better drainage so I don't think that's the because we only got minus six over the winter and in, on paper that shouldn't really affect camera ops but because that's really damp as well the stuff in the ground suffered whereas the pot which is free of draining not really an issue um so yeah we've got some potted palms along here we've got the queen palm and uh, some eureka palms there right, so we'll have to ignore the background noise obviously it is a, a weekend and people are in the garden doing stuff so we've got the Rando Donax at the back there, Spanish reed. That totally died back and then as we can see now it's sort of flushed out again. But when you, you let them die back and flush out they come back really small spindly growth but I don't mind that. Um, but I'll try and get a closer look at some of the fresh canes coming up. And we can see the, the difference between the two. If I come in here, we can see this new fresh cane here with really strong variegation and really big leaves compared to the stuff which died back and then regrew. Not the same. So if you want really fresh, big leafed Spanish reed, you cut them back before they start growing for the, the season. Right. So coming through the, the pinch point, as it were, between the uh, sunken sitting area 
and uh, the arid section we've got like a seating area there with like a, a, a garden bed but that is just a load of pots in there at the minute so we'll we'll haze over that um so we've got the transplanted trachycarpus which is actually a lot of the old leaves are yellowing out but it is actually starting to grow now from the center the center leaves are quite green and they're starting to to push a bit so that's a good sign i mean that's, that's been close to two years now so it is starting to recover obviously we've got the bromeliads around the sides but this is the little wildlife pond we've got here and this is just left to his own devices really we literally just um when stuff died back in in the, the autumn i just pull out the, the dead foliage but apart from that that's left to his own devices that is absolutely full of frogs and newts um with the backdrop of the the gunner which is probably i don't know seven foot now and probably close to well well over four meters across um so we've got a selection of canners at the front here which are starting to push through um again we've got some tropicana gold which is looking very small and spindly we've got some uh canna intica we've got the banana canners there musifolia and some more the tropicana black we've got a clump of day lilies here which are now starting to do their thing so each flower only lasts a day but you get a concession because there's loads of buds on these so that will flower for weeks and yeah quite a nice sort of summery exotic flower on them so the uh this is the two foot tree fern which i've had for well i brought it a two foot i'm probably gonna say four years i've had this now and in four years this is obviously the the size that's brought at and from then we've probably gained about three to four inches on the trunk so that's about right well, about an inch a year and yeah i didn't really protect this uh, soon enough and we did a couple of the crozes did rot out but um yeah as we can see it's uh, the fronds that has pushed out looking quite nice and healthy i mean really sort of quite big for a for a fairly small trunk but i guess that the trunk doesn't determine the, the frond size you can have something without a trunk and they still get massive fronds anyway let's carry on so we've got the pedocytes palmatum so they're starting to do quite well they're getting a quite good sized leaf on these now and nice gold flecky spots i don't know if that's picking up with the dappled light coming through so it's all doing quite well got the variegated brunner with there and we've got um brunner i think that's called sea heart that one that's doing quite well as well got the uh, umbrella plant there and we've got like a japanese painted fern underneath there and we've got the little um feather leafed acer as well so we've got the Kentia palm we put in the ground so this is it gets sort of early morning sun and it's now getting getting full shade so the we did get a bit of burn on the leaf we knew that was going to happen it doesn't matter how much you take your time acclimatizing some palms will just always get a bit of burn but we can see um fresh new leaf pushing out so the hostas albeit with a little bit of slug damage of all all in flower now so there that's quite nice i mean it's a pop of color into amongst the green um we've got a rhododendron here I need to get the tag so i can remember what type it is president roosevelt it is a variegated one but we can see it's almost trying to revert back to plain green but the variegation it is quite nice and we'll see see what happens it's now putting on another new flush so we'll see what that next lot of leaves do 
Then we've got the other rhododendron. This is the wine and roses. So that's got the really nice dark underleaf. That's a new one for this year. That did uh, flower shortly after putting it in the ground. And uh, yeah, after that, that's putting on loads of new, new flush of growth. So that's doing quite well also. The small fancy is all put on a good flush. So we've got the spider's web there. And the variegated, this one's probably getting a bit too much light. And you see it sort of curling up on the edges a bit. Not really a lot of variegation in it, but just enough for a bit of interest. Um, Bears Bridge is starting to open its flowers, which, yeah, uh, nice plant, I don't mind, but it's really sort of hiding the, uh, cord lining divisor there which is trying to push out new growth I don't know if you can even see it there um, it is pushing out new growth that's always going to be a slow one so underneath the uh, Bootia odorata which is doing quite well it's already pushed out it's already opened two fronds and working on a third so underneath that we've done some new plantings so we've got the uh, Alocasia regal shield there with the slightly darker underleaf and um, some purple heart syngoniums and so at the back here also we put in this um, persicaria there and so it's sort of mirrored on the other side there is a couple of canners in there as well, but um, they're getting decimated by the slugs at the moment, but they're trying to grow us the Tropicana Black again. Um, yeah, so we've also got a Alocasia Zebrina, so that's more of an interest on the, on the stems rather than the actual leaves. I mean, the leaves are quite nice, they're sort of quite arrow shaped. Um, so that's doing quite well outside. Um, so we're moving over, we've got a small Trachycarpus, that's a straight Fortuni, sort of slowly plugging away in the background there. Another standard fats here. We've got an Alocasia Calculator, which is doing okay. They seem to be a good one for taking full sun. Um, this, this was brought as a house plant and I didn't really acclimatise it at all, just slapped it straight outside and yeah sort of some of the leaves are yellowed out but in, in general it's done quite well you know from being indoors to straight outside in, in you know full sun. Got small alocasia here, very small. Um, this is lutea or lutea, so that's the, got the gold stems and the veins and the leaves still very small but I did notice this already got a little pop growing out the side of that so this is a, a new one I brought over winter so this is the pseudopanix mower's toes let's put on a, a new flush so that seems to be doing quite well uh, we won't mention the can of Stuttgart because that's just been again decimated by I don't know if that's caterpillars or I guess that could be caterpillars there. Um, it's grown away but I think this particular plant for me always has had really really narrow leaves and the, the variegation ain't great so I've maybe I've just got some bad genes in that particular plant. Um, Fatsy uh, camouflage so that didn't really take any damage over winter which is surprising because the winter previous which is quite mild it did but it's starting to harden up I guess and that's flushed out um, interestingly quite you know I'd say there's like three tones of green on that and it seems like the mid green is sort of taken over a lot of the leaves on that but still still worth having We've got one of these voodoo lilies which uh, flowered a little while back which stunk but uh, 
starting to push out its leaves and again we've had uh, some insect damage on that which is a shame that is obviously caterpillars I'd say so we've got the Chinese fan palm or Livingstone chinensis so it is went in the ground fairly early on this was in the polytunnel over winter so at sea minus two stroke minus three damp so that did get a little bit of damage on some of the leaves but in general looking good and yeah like i say starting to flush out there's four four individual palms and they've all got new new fronds coming out so that'll have a nice new flush on that so the white bird of paradise or giant bird of paradise still it's a Nicolai, this is a seed grown one from, I'll say, six years now. And uh, last year I brought it out and it snapped a big frond. Um, but since then, I pushed out another one last year and just opened this one this year. And yeah, quite, quite big leaves on these to say the least. They're, they're called Giant Bird of Paradise for a reason. So that is obviously just opened up so us against the fence that so doesn't get full wind so that might not shred up so much but obviously we can see the bigger one there has a I mean that is what they're evolved to do same as bananas you know they're big leaves they're paddles if they you know literally it's just gonna snap if they didn't shred they'd snap so they're gonna have to do that and yeah this is uh, starting to get some pups around it as well so they do pop eventually if you've got an individual plant Another can of musifolia there. Um, ashamed to say that I've let the bindweed get a bit out of control over this fuchsia and it is already starting to flower. But I don't know, the bees seem to love them, so I'll leave that until it's finished flowering and I'll, I'll take that out. Um, yes, yeah, so this is one of the camera ops which uh, did spear pull over winter, and as we can see making a good recovery, plenty of new growth coming out there. Hostas again, plenty of insect damage on them. Um, so we've got croton there, just a potted house plant, but again, you don't see the pot when it's tucked in there with the rest of the foliage, and it just gives it a little bit of pop of a different color. We've got, Cheflera Taiwanianus is one I bought last year and that's probably a third of the size of that so it doubled last year and it's grown another third since so this is all the new flush at the top here again a little bit of insect damage on some of these disappointing but can't really do much about it we can see the older foliage here uh, very sort of curled up and losing a bit bit green uh, not green bit bit, bit yellow losing colour but yeah, new flush is good. And to be fair, there's, uh, there's loads of growth at the bottom of that. So we'll have some more stems coming out. So I did say a little while back when I'd done some plantings that I had Colocasia escalente, which is like the standard green. This is one that I started off early um, in a polytunnel. Got a good head start on it and planted it out. And that's the size of the leaf. So that's probably what about the size of my hand. This is one that I left in the ground and uh, the leaves double the size so at the time when I planted it this one was behind so it just goes to show that sometimes same with canners or anything you can start them off early but you know by mid-season the ones in the ground always seem to do better. Right got this uh, selenium something or other uh, really dark stems spiky leaves um, spikes on the top and bottom of the leaves but a um, bit different we'll see what happens with that so we'll let the, the peonies go they've sort of finished flowering now we have got a calla lily or you know dwarf santadecia They've got spotted leaves and they uh, start to flower. They're, they were left in, in ground over winter. They always come back, no problem. Another alocasia there. I believe this one is Petora, 
because of the sort of more crinkly leaves and the speckled stem on there. And we've got a aglaonema, so that is a house plant which is in a pot, stunken into the ground, so I can just pull it out at the end of the year. So we did have a lot of damage on the original cordline superstar we had here, so I did invest and buy a new one. I dug the old one out and it is now starting to regrow from the roots. So the main trunk did die, but it's got a side shoot. So a couple of years time, that'll come back to full glory, hopefully. This is a check your carpus. Um, I bought a couple at the same time from a uh, Facebook seller and uh, I guess they're doubled in size since that's probably three years ago so this I've got this one here and there's one at the front which is all, you know pretty much similar size then we've got a little waggy here so check your cup with Wagner anus fronds starting to get bigger on that but really nice palm then we've got another clump of the can of musifolia. Again, normally this time of year, I expect them to be five or six foot, and as it is, they're probably three foot if you're lucky. So the uh, big cord lines, they've, the flowers have just gone over really, so you can't really smell it anymore, but when they do, when you do get that waft, that's, you know, not really sort of jasmine waft, and that really is quite strong. I do feel the garden, even at the bottom of the garden, you can, you can smell that and I think the, the flowering process does sap a lot of energy from the plant because you know since the flowers are starting to grow over we have got a lot of yellow and fronds which is absolutely normal that does like I say to sap the energy out of the plant so let's put all this energy into flowering so a lot of the, the bottom leaves will brown as we can see here, but that's nothing to worry about. It's a natural process that they, they, they will keep flushing out new growth as they recover from flowering. We have got a small cherry tree at the back there, which the cherries are starting to starting to go red, but they, that's one that really needs to go sort of dark purple before you can pick them. So I need to keep on top of that and keep the birds away from that because otherwise they'll eat all them. So we've got sort of behind or in the shadows of the big cord lines, which you know, I'll try and give you an idea of the, the height of these. These are uh, at least 16 to 18 foot. I, I couldn't tell you exactly. We have got the my biggest tree fern. This is a five foot trunk and uh, always done quite well. It always flushes out really nice, big, big flush. and. Uh, even the, the leaves from last year, most of them we've kept as well, albeit slightly browning on the ends, just due to the overhead protection of the cord lines. So if I get at the back of this, we can have a closer look at what's going on. So we've got a Oranga angleri, which is the sort of sugar palm. And uh, again, this is one where every year I used to bring it in and bring it out for the summer and every year that's this one that always burns so it's always going to look rough so we're going to we slapped it in the ground and we're going to see what happens over winter on this one um it is starting to push a new spear there we've got another fatsy here uh, which is, again this is the variegated one again tends to be very Sort of just on the tips the variegation in general but still quite nice and you know, flushed out a good uh, good size leaves this year so they're doing quite well looking, looking quite nice and glossy at the moment and then that leads us to this which is the big leaf rhododendron which i bought i'm going to say end of march time 36 quid um, probably my favourite plant I've bought this year and um, just totally exceeded expectations uh, that came with buds this was half the size and I thought I was going to flower and then it weren't as a new flush of growth so 
I haven't actually measured these leaves. I'm going to one day, but I'm sure these are a good foot and a half long. They, they're pretty big. So that's done really well in that new flush. And we've got multiple buds coming in the centers again. So this, again, really was a good investment for me. And I weren't really expecting it to, to do as well as it has. It really has uh, exceeded all expectations when it comes to to size and uh, growth speed and that's already well over a metre and a half across five six foot right we've got small fancy spider web there we've got a few potted ferns here we've got small um sayafi cooper eye we've got i forget the name of them but this one of these uh really house plant sort of that is a trunk and fern tree fern but that goes outside for summer seems to be happy with that <clears throat> right we've got a small fig tree in a pot we've got another pseudopanix here this is the fur rocks um this did flush so this is the new growth from here up so far this year so I guess we're talking about three inches um, so this is one of these ones that's gonna get really tall but um, I don't know if that's the right place to plant it but that's getting plenty of sun there it seems to be grown so it's pretty dry all right so we've we sort of covered the, the deck and area in the previous video with all the uh, more unusual palms in these pots so I want dwell on them too long yeah I've got another standard bird of paradise here which is um yes yeah, pushing out new growth and really sort of vivid red vein on the new growth as well but I'm guessing this could be a flower spike here it did flower last year just had the one flower on it really poor growth habit on this one um I've repotted this a couple of times and, and, and rightened it so it's sort of going straight up and it just whether it's just a, a big lump of root this side which is always pushing it to one side but yeah it is what it is <clears throat> all mow out the way so this is the the new newly planted this year shade area um quite stuffed full of plants at the minute um until things sort of settle in and sort of grow out a bit but I'll just go through the highlight plants I need to go through every single one so we've got a lot of ferns in here we've got the fatsy another again another um, variegated fatsy because I think they always look good um, in the shade you know really the variegation really pops we have got a polycarpa fatsy at the back uh, I mean through my roof find I can't really see much but I'm hoping that I'll come out better on video this dude with the, the dappled light coming through. Um, we've got a fat hedra there, which is like the camouflage one. We've got a Raphis Excelsior Lady Palm. We've got the um, Camadoria Radicalis Hardy Parlor Palm. That's a pot full of about 10 palms in that. So I'm still debating where to plant that. It's going to need shade, but I don't because I planted this area before I got that um, so yeah I'm still thinking about if I can pull a plant out and move it we've got another Camadoria here this is the uh, Metallica so that's pushed out a, a new leaf and a flower spike coming on there I don't know if we can pick that up we've got another variegated rhododendron there that's quite a nice one sort of a the outer leaves, nice variegation on that, so that's going to be evergreen. Obviously, we've got the giant hosta in the middle here. This is summon substance. Um, never ceases to amaze me the size of these leaves, and this one is quite a, a thick leaf on these, so they don't get so much insect damage. We have obviously got the odd hole here and there, but in the in the general, that's done really well. Obviously, we're getting the flower spikes on that as well. We've got some more of the pedicytes there so this is the the palm my biggest trachycarpus which often gets overlooked 
they're sort of hidden away here. So it did flower for the first time this year and it's female. You see, it's, there's no nearby trachycarpa, so that's not going to set seed. They, they'll just drop and they have started to drop. We can see on there. I don't know if you can see it on the fatsia leaf. Um, there's a pile of little seeds where they've just fell off. But yeah, that's, that's uh, doing quite well with that track. Yes, been in the shade for a long time and now it's starting to reach the sun. That always, always really does put on a good bit of decent growth. And um, last couple of years here, yeah, we've gained about three foot on that. We've got another red star here, which was undamaged over winter, just due to the, the crammed nature of the, the plant. And so that was sort of protected by the the palms over it so that's been absolutely fine and that seems to have grown pretty quick this one so whether that's just a case of right plant right place or whether i've just got lucky but that's really really done quite well it's planted it's quite a small specimen no trunk literally only about three years ago another camerops humulus here this is one of the few that didn't get damaged ones i've got in the ground um again just due to the overhead canopy i guess um quite like the leaves on this one because that's in shade they're really stretched out and they do look uh, quite nice a lot more tropical looking all right so we've come to obviously we've got the canary island date palm here and uh yes it did take some damage over winter we've got some uh brown tips on some of the leaves but in general it kept green and I don't know if it doesn't really show on camera how big this thing is, but it's absolutely massive. And there's just an absolute cluster of new growth coming out on that. So that's sort of uh, done quite well considering the, the winter we had. Um, underneath that, we've just got some dwarf cannas, so they don't really get any bigger than they are now, and they, they'll start to flower soon. So I, I quite like that. You know, not everything has to be big. Especially if you're under a under a larger plant, you just want some under plant, and that's, dwarf canners are always a good good option for that. So we've got uh, these are the new plantings this year again. So we've got a cluster of three cord lines. So we've got the coral cord line. I don't know if that's picking up, but there's sort of uh, ready coral stripes in the leaves. Um, really sort of quite unusual bit different standard red star and we've got a what is this southern splendor so one of the pink ones and we've got another camera ops here which again took took a bit of damage but grown out of it and we've got the oriander there um so this is again the new area with the newly developed pond area and um, starting to sort of fill out a bit now we wanted it to be a sort of basic gravel area with sort of stones and whatnot but uh, there must have been some uh, seed somewhere this watercress because that's sort of come up uh, that's dried out a bit now but that's, that's just basically gone all the way around this watercress and uh, Certainly in the waterfall, because it does like uh, moving water. That's done really, I say really well, it will do. That's what it does, it, it grows quick. But you can eat it, so that's good. Quite peppery though. And um, we've got the sort of standard arrowhead pond plants. I will say this is, again, I start the video about 10 o'clock. So this side is only just starting to get the sun, but this gets full sun from mid-morning to sort of late afternoon stroke evening so this is the new plant of the the american palm bed we'll call it with the um so we've got the queen palm in the middle there which is the mountain form so a little bit hardier than standard and that this frond here i believe is all this year's growth since it's gone in and we've got a small needle palm one side small um sable minor 